Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 110. This episode is my new friend Darren Ross, who's the coolest. He was recommended to me by TJ Storm, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad he did, because Darren is great. Uh, We talk about him growing up in New York and getting in trouble as a kid for drawing in class, but that didn't stop him, because he went on to go into more drawing, and then more art, and then into animation. And then he talks about how animation turned into a career in motion capture. We talk about our favorite Batman villains. And he makes the best case for Ra's al Ghul I've ever heard. We also talk about the correct pronunciation. We talk about uh, our love of comic books. What it takes to be a good stunt coordinator. Because Darren is a stunt coordinator. And it's so cool to hear his stories about growing up as a kid, loving these superheroes, and then getting to play these superheroes later on in life. Oh, it's so inspiring. It's so inspiring. He talks about... Uh, different things that he's learned as a stunt coordinator, what makes a good stunt coordinator, and more importantly, what is a stunt coordinator? Because, I mean, who really knows, you know? Well, now we all do at the end of this. Uh, We talk about our mutual love of TJ Storm. We talk about working on Deadpool. And then, of course, we talked about Jedi Fallen Order. He was the stunt coordinator on that. And we talk about different uh, things about how they develop the fighting style of Cal and a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. Darren's the coolest. He's the best. So let's just do it. Here we go. Please enjoy... The Interesting Podcast, episode number 110, with Darren Ross. Theme song time. Good, good. Do, do, how do you take your coffee? Do you take it black? Do you put creamer in it? This is a bulletproof coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's um, there is a brand called Bulletproof that mm-hmm. has their own form of MCT oil, uh-huh. super concentrated. Of course, it's excellent. You take that, then you put some nice grass-fed butter unsalted unless you want a salty butter hey you know i'm not gonna fault you for that Some people like to be salty a little bit a little bit it helps a little bit and then um uh, i add collagen to it oh nice very nice yes and um uh my buddy ruben langdon who is another great guy you should have on the show by the way done done he yeah he has turned me on to this great coffee bean brand called uh, Tiemann's Fusion Coffee. It's got super antioxidants. Wow. So basically the goal is to keep making the coffee the healthiest coffee as possible. We also started adding, um, Ruben and I started doing, we started adding like uh, mushrooms, reishi, cordyceps. Really? There's a lot of new wonderful data on the benefits of mushrooms, lion's mane, Really, really great. Cordyceps is great for like energy lines. I mean, they're good for the brain, good for the body. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Yeah. And and it helps me with my addiction to energy drinks. Hey. What, me off of them. what what was what was your poison? Which which brand did you go with? Well, I was trying to find healthier have healthier stuff. Uh huh. So I swap through different things. Um oh. There's some brands now, like Red Bull has, mm-hmm. that have branched chain amino acids in them. Oh. Yeah, so it's like, okay, well, getting you're getting vitamin B12s and you're getting branched chain aminos and other amino acids, but still, it's an energy drink. Yeah. And it's other <laughs> you're so, also getting battery acid, you know? <laughs> you're also getting battery acid, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, I might grow three arms. You right, know, you know, right. Which could come in handy beautiful. in your profession, really. Yeah, very, very true, very true. You know, I less... was hoping that was going to happen, yeah. but it's yeah. happening. <laughs> less work for the animators. <laughs> like, why does yeah, Darren like, keep hey. pounding Red Bulls? It's like, don't worry about it. It's a process. <laughs> He's experimenting. He's trying to get superpowers. That's right. That's right. Why is he hooking up 
do a lightning rod. If you try, yeah. <laughs> if you could strike lightning in this energy drink, and then I drink it, maybe that'll create it. It's, there's only one way to find out, for sure. And you know what? Yep. I support it. I'm a man of science, 100%. Darren, I'm here for you. <laughs> I will keep you posted. Yeah, Once yeah. It happens, <laughs> we if, could do a whole separate co- co- podcast on that. Yeah, if you don't mind, just put me in the special thanks for like enabling, and then and then we're even. Absolutely. You know, you know? <laughs> I've never put butter in Absolutely. coffee though. That sounds that's it sounds actually really good, but I've never thought about it before. It's delicious. Yeah, it's delicious. It's, so the whole thing is to get the really good healthy fats right. that are good for your good for your brain. Um, it's also also you could put turmeric in there and uh, great. Ooh, there you go. That's it. That see that's like a go to like healthy word. If you ever want to sound really healthy, just throw around the word turmeric. That's right. That's right. That's all you need. It's like it, <laughs> it, it's when you when you're looking for something healthy. Like this is oh, it's got turmeric in it. That has to be healthy. It's just it's, that's how it works. Gotta, gotta be good. Yeah, you can't you can't not have turmeric in something, and then you have to have turmeric in something for it to be healthy. It's like the uh, what is it? The FDA label. <laughs> yeah. Well, turmeric. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Done. Done. You can't mess with turmeric. It's the it's the clear all. Exactly. Nobody's uh, nobody's questioning that. Nope. Not at all. Not at it works all. like you gotta be really careful because it's like super. It's like it's very powerful. Like a little dab will do you. Is a lot of flavor, but also the powder gets everywhere, and then it's like hard to get off your like wash off your hands. You, oh, and no. even when you drink it, there's times when Ruben and I have been drinking it, and there's a little too much turmeric, and we got like yellow tongues. <laughs> yeah, like this part of my process. Great. Don't ask. Yeah, yeah, great for comedic effect. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See, turmeric, it has so many applications for health oh, yeah. and for comedy. I'm into it. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> My goodness. So you're you're in LA now, but you're not sure. from you're not from there. Nobody's from there. Nobody's from there. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> where, very, very true. Where where are you from? Where were you born? I grew up in Long Island, New York. Oh, that's very, really very far close. away. Uh yep, East Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, I was uh, well, I was born in Farakaway, Queens. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yep. Spent a, a lot of basically. I mean, I grew up there. Um, Long Island's great. It's uh, I mean, Long Island itself is huge. It could be its own state. It's bigger than Rhode Island. Right. A lot, a lot of people, uh, you know, classically when people think of New York, of course, they think of Manhattan. They think of the triboroughs, <clears throat> but Long Island itself is huge. Right. There's like people, suburbs there. Oh, oh yeah, and then people forget that that New York State itself is this big, giant, gorgeous, magnificent state with you know mountains and upstate, and it's it's very different than the island of Manhattan and the tri rows and Long Island. Sure, it's kind of funny how like a state can be defined by such a small part of it. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, like sure. bu- Buffalo is still New York, but then you're like, oh, but you don't think about Buffalo when you think New York. You think of <laughs> Manhattan. Totally. It's crazy. When I was in uh, when I was in college, I went to a, uh, an art institute in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and like like any college, you meet people from all over the place. And I remember uh, once in a while, there was a guy I, I think I met him. He he was he became friends, but he was like, "You're from New York? Oh, hey man, I'm from Buffalo." And I'm <laughs> like, "Bro, I'm like, you are a lower Canadian. <laughs> like, you are so far up there in a way different kind of New York." I said, I'm Long Island, man. I said, we are not, it's, yeah, it's very different. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 Long Island, yeah, that's different. And he even talked, to, you know, he just. Sure. <laughs> so he funny. says a boot. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That's, that's amazing. Kind of New York, my friend. A lower Canadian. That's my new favorite phrase. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I have a very high appreciation for Canada. Love Canada. Canada's the best. America's hat. Yes. <laughs> fine. Very yeah. fine hat. Yeah, for real. So you went to college in Pittsburgh for art. Did you was art your original thing that you it, wanted to get into? Absolutely. Uh, when I was a kid, and, um, my mother tremendously supported me as an artist, and because um, she's an That's artist so at cool. art as well. But I really, from as little as I can remember, I was drawing comic book superheroes. I was sculpting. I, really? I just loved, loved art. Yes. I've got, I mean, there's 
stuff from my mom's got drawings from when I'm three years old, drawing Spider Man and Batman and what? Superman. And I was always a Marvel and DC kid, and and just incredibly into all of that. Um, I, I, my my mom's got a, a, a picture of me, a, a T-shirt with a Superman on it, and I, I must be like two or three years old. It's like I'm like, wow. I said I was really always. She's like, oh yeah, you were always into superheroes. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you just that was your thing, and you were drawing them and you loved it. And later on, getting in trouble for drawing ninjas in fifth grade class actually nice so that's where the art kind of started taking the path of kind of getting me in trouble sure sure <laughs> as you as you do it's a it's a rite I, of passage i was enjoying drawing ninjas more than learning about social studies i mean you know that's fair social studies are a wonderful thing for some but <laughs> yeah i mean My i think it worked out for you Sort of getting called to school for things like that. My uh, one of my teachers literally like pulls the paper up and shows like the whole class, like, "Oh, look at this!" And I was I was drawing the blood on the Chinese stars. <laughs> look what you're doing. Look at this. Anybody else uh, want to see this? And you want to share it with the class? Like totally outs <laughs> me and then gets me in trouble and calls up my mom and, and shows this to my mom. Calls my mom from her 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 job as a legal assistant to come to the school. And it's like, this is what your child has been drawing in class. Right. <laughs> Can you believe this? And she looks at the teacher and looks at the paper. Didn't tell my mom what it was. She goes, you called me in an emergency, telling me there's an emergency. I need to come here. I left my job <laughs> because you can't have a talk with my kid about drawing ninjas in class. <laughs> She's like, are you kidding me? And the teacher just did not know what to do. Of course, I still got my ass kicked by my mom. Of course, of course. Just for sake. By the you way, know. How, colorful language okay. Of course, of course. Take That's your, good, because that, take would your shoes out, off. that would wipe out about 75% of my language. <laughs> oh, you're good, you're good. This is a place where we, we just take your shoes off, lean back, you know. <laughs> That's great. Then I, would, then I would, everything would slow down. Right, yeah. <laughs> there there ends coming up being from... a lot of pauses between your answers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because no, it's, it's coming from New York. And right, then, right. A lot of time with military and martial artists, and we all like colorful languages. We just find it more effective in what we do. That's right. Sentence enhancers. I got you, buddy. Sentence enhancers. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, Brian. That's right. That's right. I'm here to help. As I said, I'm very good at enabling, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm Totally stealing that. By all means, by all means, spread it around. <laughs> spread the good news. That's yeah. hilarious, though. Hey, you know what? I feel like, especially being a kid in New York, like a lot of comics are like centered around New York. Like it's part of New York culture. I mean, Stan Lee was from New York. You know? Oh it's, yeah, that's pretty neat. Oh yeah. I firmly believe the a huge part of the success of the heart and soul in the Marvel stories mm -hmm. was because Stan and those guys were in New York, but Stan himself being such a New Yorker and always making New York a big part of the characters and the heart and soul of it. Yeah. It was a very, you could see a very big difference from the Marvel superheroes to any other superheroes. Totally. Totally. I agree. It's really cool. And, though. and, and relatability. I think there was just more relatability because they were so good about giving them flaws. True. No matter, no matter how powerful they were, right? Yeah. It's like you could, they always had a relatability. And I, and I think that that it was a guy who, who, you know, he grew up in a place like Manhattan and, and you know, it's such a world of experience that you have, no matter how much time you spend in New York, but especially when you grow up there and what you see. I bet. I bet. So who were your favorite superheroes? On the Marvel side, I always loved Spider-Man. Um, I actually was a really big Hulk fan. Really? Uh, Marvel. And, I, and again, here's the relatability thing. I had a very bad temper uh -huh. <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> as my mom can also, and my brother can also tell you. Mm -hmm. And um, the Hulk anger being his thing and him, him utilizing it, not always in the best way. True. But as much as he could at times use it in a good way. 
it really was relatability for me. There was there was something for me that just reading about this, you know, he the Hulk had this Frankenstonian, you know, Frankenstein aspect to him, right? Misunderstood monster thing mm-hmm. with the power he had driven by anger uh, was something for me as a kid trying to understand myself and, and my own temperament and why I was, you know, why would I be so temperamental? It was, uh, I think it was just a little bit of peace for me. You know, every, I mean, anytime you sit down, you, you can read a nice comic book. It's peaceful, right? It's beautiful. But, mm-hmm. but that specific thing for me was always uh, enjoyable. And then seeing the, the transformations and adventures he'd have in and out of that. And uh, it was beautiful. But I loved all of the X-Men and Captain America. Uh, most of the Marvel superheroes were, were always enjoyable for me. And, and where they've gone with them over the years, I just think is amazing. Yeah. Um, and, I, and then on the DC side, Batman was always my guy. Yeah, hard to I, beat. I hard to beat. Was, was Batman. He just yeah, because you know it's the classic. He doesn't have any superpowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people always talk about him going well. His you know his, his superpowers is his peak of human ability and training in martial arts. And I'm like, no, actually, his greatest superpower is the fact that he was a detective. Exactly, his preemptiveness. It's like it's like Batman. Yeah. Batman could be anyone if he had time to prepare, because he'd be That's like, oh, exactly. got it. Got it. So, actually, yeah, I right. like to ask fellow Batman fans, who's your favorite Batman villain? Ooh. I know, right? I know. <laughs> okay. Well, let's 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 um um I will have to say, let's dive. Let's do this. I will have to say it's it's Ra's al Ghul. Ooh, good one. And here's and here's why. Okay. Here's Let's dive. Um, uh, I respect all of Batman's villains for their unique qualities, mm-hmm. but Raish, what's really amazing about Raish is he here is this guy who's kept himself alive for hundreds of years. Yeah, has found this you know Lazarus pit chemical you know, mysterious sort of ancient thing that, that, that he, you know, gets himself into to keep himself alive, right? And regenerate. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's fantastical, but there's still kind of, because of it it being this, this something like ancient hundreds of years old, you kind of go, well, maybe, you know, it's this kind of strange found of youth. So it still kind of has a groundedness in some, some sort of maybe possible, and because of that, he's, you know, there's this sort of vampire-like quality about him that he's, because he's been alive so long, he's experienced so much, and and has um, his own way of going, like, I want to reset the Earth because everybody's messing up the planet. Right. And I just want to let everybody out and reboot. And only think that Batman is the one guy worthy of doing it by his side and wants him to marry his, his daughter mm-hmm. and rule together as a family. So it's he's got these noble causes, noble reasons for why he wants to do what he does, even though it's in a, a terrorist, you know, they, they, they sometimes they call him like an eco-terrorist kind of fashion. Right. But, it, you know, every great villain, right, is, is the most relatable. It's true. Right? And, and has vulnerabilities and also his his connection to his daughter how how close they were the training he gave his daughter and how she loved bruce and and uh things they've had together over the years and having a child and a son i mean there's like there's so many great things about that villain that has the most history and and uh, and also family right because batman's his whole his whole thing is built on family loss right so so here you have this fatherly like character that that embraces him for everything. He calls him the, the detective. He does. He, he does. doesn't call him Batman. He doesn't call him Bruce. He calls him the detective. So he he respects him for the greatest thing that he knows he is is that it, which I love that right. Yeah. And, and taking him in in this family way, he's like 
I want you to rule with me. I want you to be a part of my family. Marry my daughter. I mean, like, nobody's ever done that for him other than Alfred, sure. right? Alfred is the only person. Sorry, I'm going off on a real. No, I love know, this. Going in deep, bro. Dude, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm about. I'm so into this right now. Yeah, so, you know, Alfred is the only other human being uh, that has, has, in a fatherly manner, taken him in in that way, right? Other than to so race. Right. Thing, thing. So for me, that's what makes him the most interesting and his his the best villain. And he's and here's the thing: he's that villain, not villain, because there's times where they fought together. There's, right. Uh, there's, Man, uh, you know, some great issues where they've done. You know, there's Batman, Son of the Demon, is this really excellent. Um sort of graphic novel story arc mm -hmm. where like you get to see them side by side in the, in a way that you're like, Oh man, this is kind of cool. I think right. these guys should <laughs> reset the earth together. What would that look like? Yeah. You know, but they all, but I was, but you know, Joker is amazing for his, his story. Um, uh, uh, I think, um, Jason Todd as the Red Hood. Ooh, that whole, good one. Good one. That was great because it's like, wow, turning Jason into an enemy right. is, was was really brilliantly done. And the Lazarus Pit, all that, you know. That was that was pretty amazing because that's kind of like, whoa, how does he how does he go against that? This is this was like his one of his wards, his sons he raised, you know. Yeah. I think you I just think, made the greatest case for Ra's al Ghul I've ever heard. Yeah. That was well, thank you, brother. amazing. That. Like I think I think within the last minute and a half, Ra's al Ghul became my second favorite Batman villain. Well nice. done. Who, well done. Who's your Clayface? Oh yeah. I love Clayface. My first comic I ever read was Batman versus Clayface when I was like six. And I just love the idea that he can turn into anything and the backstory like what really sold it on me was he can turn into anything but he's an actor and I was like oh just the synergy of like he can play any role and then he likes to do that to play with people I just I don't know I just really like it yeah I know it's it's great it's pretty good and then that whole spoiler alert if you haven't played it but the twist in the in the second Arkham game that was like one of the greatest moments ever I was like, oh, it's him! It, they did Clayface! So I'm always looking for more Clayface because he's such like a weird villain that doesn't get utilized very much. Um, yeah, I like yeah, Clayface. And when he's and when he's used well... Right? You know, it's it's like, ooh, you That's know? True. That's true. But you got Liam Neeson. I mean, you can't, you can't get better than that. You just can't. You peaked. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's always more we can do. That's true. That's true. Who knows? Who knows? Dude, that's so cool, I did, though. I, I think they did do some good things with Liam and the character. Um, yeah. But there's still so much unexplored with Raish. Agreed. Agreed. Who, by the way, has been pronounced as Raz and Raish. That's true. Raze, Raz, and Raish. I have thoroughly researched this. And the animated, the animated movies and TV series have both Raish and Roz. And then there's one, there's one scene where uh, I believe it's Talia actually corrects Nightwing. Oh, really? And it's like, and I think they did this to kind of go like, hey, let's yeah. reset this. <laughs> sure. Because anyway, he's calling him Roz, and she's like, you know, um, everybody kind of mistakenly calls him that, but it's really Raish. Yeah, <laughs> a wink at the audience, I, guys. Here's I, how it's said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think both are acceptable because they they had it as Roz in the films, and and you know you hear Christian Bale calling him Roz, so I think it's like Raish Roz. Yeah, you la you land you land on Raish. I mean, if Talia says it's Raish, it's Raish. Well, I, that's the only reason why. I yeah. I personally like Roz. I think Roz sounds Raish and Roz sounds cooler. Yeah, me. yeah, it's more Raish, fun to say. <laughs> Raish sounds like you're saying it wrong. You know, you're, yes, like, right? you're like Raish. Is, is that Raish? Like, it's is that a yeah. is that a word or a name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's Raish pretty. It, it it works that you 
are drawing ninja stars and things then if you like Batman. I mean, you know, it's the whole League of Shadows and stuff. I'm seeing a thread here. Oh, dude, I <laughs> literally, like, I would love to meet that teacher today and go. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you for calling me out on that because, you know, I'm actually professionally making money doing this. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. You're like, I've met Batman, by the way, um, just so as you know. <laughs> I've I, I've played Batman. That's right. You've been Batman. <laughs> Keep dreaming, children. It can work. I, played be- I will say, um, uh, going back to the villain thing, mm-hmm. uh, I do love Mark Hamill's Joker. Oh, yeah. It's the quintessential Joker. It is the quintessential Joker uh, with the animated series. I mean, he just he's amazing. I got to work with him on the very first Arkham trailer we did for the games what really what was crazy bro was in the vo booth i was filming him for reference because we were recording him for his laughter Mm -hmm. and i I, like you want to talk about dream come true moment craziness i'm sitting there going okay i'm watching literally one of my favorite heroes yeah. Luke playing one of Batman's greatest villains or one of my favorite superheroes <laughs> on a project and I'm like three feet away from him filming him and dude when I tell you he transforms really like Mark Hamill Luke goes away and his body and face contorts when he does it I had fucking chills what man. And I was like filming, and I'm like, "Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Holy shit!" Right <laughs> to be witness. And, and, oh my god! And then after one of the takes, he still had his headphones and on, and I'm like, my mouth is open. I'm like, uh, "That just you just gave me chills." Yeah. And he looks at me like, "Huh?" And he takes off the headphones. He goes, "I'm sorry. What was that?" <laughs> and as he's saying, "I'm sorry. What was that?" He transforms back to lovely mark hamill i'm like uh you just totally gave me chills and he goes oh well thank you <laughs> <laughs> i was like holy shit Goodness. amazing what is your life at that point you know oh bro and then i ended wow. up playing the joker for the body and face performance of that no way happens is i'll send you the trailer at the end of this this um reveal yeah yeah Showing, remember, the, I don't know if you remember, like, Joker was all sick. Yeah, oh, yeah. So Mark was doing the laugh and then ending it in this, like, coughing <coughs> thing. Uh-huh. So I had the reference, and, you know, I'm, I'm never going to never gonna touch Mark Hamill, but yeah. <laughs> what it is, is, you know, I gave the body performance and face performance as much as I could of, of what he was doing and, and, and doing this whole laughter thing and slapping the chair, and then I come up and start coughing, you know, and... and 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 played played it in the the motion capture body and face performance and it was just like bananas. It was like wow, thank you universe. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. Started drawing yeah. superheroes and getting in trouble to being these people. That what? So, okay, so you started as an artist then, drawing and things like that. You went to school for that. So, you started, I'm assuming, in the entertainment industry as an artist, right? Yes, yeah, so I I basically I went after visual effects. Actually, it was called special effects back then. It was uh-huh. it was, it was um, Star Wars and like Ray Harryhausen stop motion. Yeah, were the things that just blew my mind and made me go, "Whoa! I bet. What is this? Who's doing this? How are they doing this? I've got to pursue this." And started learning about what special effects are, who's doing it, who's George Lucas. And right. The, How? Yeah, oh, he's this guy. He's in Marin County, and there's this special effects company, Industrial Light and Magic. These guys created new stuff to make Star Wars and figure out how to shoot models and miniatures in this really amazing way and make lightsabers come to life and and just just absolutely put my head into all of it. Learned everything I could about it, and and was always like, 
well, that's it. Someday I'm going to go out to Los Angeles and, and go after that. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Ray Harryhausen, I love the stop motion stuff that he did. I loved all of his films that he did and would do stop motion on my own. My, my, my uncle Nick, who is very much a father figure. I was very lucky to have him in my life would give me his cameras. He would buy video cameras and, and he'd get a new one and he would give me his old one. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks to my uncle. I, I, uh, would film stuff all the time and I would do stop motion. Now doing stop motion with video cameras is actually not the greatest way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> not, for that, it's not, it's not an eight millimeter, 16 millimeter camera kind of thing, but, right. but I was figuring out how to like, time the roll back on it to kind of get like, you know, some, some, some form of rough stop motion animation and started doing that at, at home on my own. Mm -hmm. My, my mom and my, my, my grandfather who, my grandfather literally was my dad. He, he, and, and growing up in the house, it was my grandparents, my mom, my brother, and, and uh, my parents, of course, when I was very little. Mm -hmm. So I would have sculptures and characters and claymation stuff all over different parts of the house. And, yeah, you know, my uh, my grandfather would be like, "Okay, all right, well, he's, he's doing his thing." <laughs> you know, he, you know, and he would want to clean out something on the porch, but he's like, "I'm not going to touch your, your your figures and stuff." And right, my grandfather was tremendously supportive, and um, so that yeah, so the the that's what kind of was the direction I was going after, and and um, my mom. We start. Actually, this is crazy. You want to hear an interesting story? Yes. When, so I have a very close friend who's who uh, his family, the Jaycox family, in my neighborhood. Their fam, their yard was like a half acre that ran behind our yards in the neighborhood. I'd have to show you the vision on that. But but mm -hmm. wonderful family who had a half basketball court. They would let all of us. The house is close to them. All of us play in their yard all the time. We play hide and seek, basketball. You, I mean, you name it, we played it. And my brother was five years older, and Jimmy J. Cox was my like my brother's generation. And so, it, hanging in the, in the neighborhood, it was like two generations of kids. And of course, the younger kids always want to hang out with the cool older kids. Of course, of course. So we would do all sorts of fun stuff with them. But Jimmy was very spiritual and uh mm -hmm. you know as italian irish kids in the neighborhood yeah we went to we went to church went to catholic church and and they sent us the catechism and we were the worst freaking kids you could probably stick in a catechism class because <laughs> literally every wednesday in grade school a bus would come and an hour early we'd get on the bus and we'd all go to catechism now literally all of us were the kids in the neighborhood that would play together would go sit in a catechism class and it'd be like your buddy's aunt teaching you about catechism so none yeah. of us took it seriously <laughs> Sure. We were the worst for kids, <laughs> and, but so I'm not religious these days. I'm 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 spiritual. I I I train and meditate and things that kind of complement the martial arts I'm up to. There you go. And so yeah, like Zen Buddhism and different yogi yoga, Kundalini yoga stuff. Yeah. But Jim was my first sort of introduction to spirituality outside of religion. He was into. Native American shaman sort of stuff. Oh. And so we we just became friends and he would and I was open to that as an artist and, and such and so he would teach me about different like cool Native American shaman stuff and, and but Jimmy was also an artist and because he was older he would take me and my, my friend Jared who I grew up with, who was like a brother. Mm -hmm. He would take us to the Fangoria convention every year. Oh nice. Yeah, so you know the Fangoria Convention in New York, with the Jacob Javits Center was was awesome. It was a huge, huge thing, and and so you'd see all kinds of crazy stuff going on with sculptures and masks and prosthetics. And I never wanted to get into the horror stuff, mm -hmm. but the Fangoria Convention was fun to go to. Sure. I well, bet. One, yeah, it was amazing. One year, uh, this is getting like close to um, I think going to my senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. The artist. To Pittsburgh had a table there, and there was this really awesome Freddy Krueger sculpture that I go over and look at. I'm like, "Whoa, this sculpture is amazing!" And, uh, and I'm like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "Oh, this is the artist dude. This is uh, one of our students who made this." Blah blah blah. I'm like, "The artist dude." And then they 
show me a whole pamphlet on the school. And they're like, yeah, why don't you sign up? We'll send you some info. And then if you're interested, you can come check us out. I'm like, yeah, sure. Nice. Jimmy was with me. He's like, yeah. He's like Darren, just, that looks cool. You should that, you should sign up for that. Totally forget about it. <laughs> and flash forward, uh, I start looking at the different schools and colleges, you know, and they're very expensive. And I wanted to go to CalArts, and CalArts was expensive and stuff. But then – um the information on the art Institute popped up and my mom's like, well, why don't we go check this out? It's in Pittsburgh. And I'm like, yeah. And I go with my mom, we go look at it and it looks great. And that's where I ended up going to school. Dude, look at and that. It's pretty amazing because they had a program back then that was, they called it industrial design technology, but you were really learning art design in all areas. And they had a special effects program where you were doing, models and miniatures and mask prosthetic stuff what that's cool yeah that was very very cool and i don't remember really another school quite having something that's that to that specific sure i mean cal arts definitely had amazing amazing stuff mm -hmm. yeah but uh it definitely made a difference and um was pretty was pretty amazing to go to college there i bet and then is that where you learned like animation and stuff as well well, back then they didn't have uh, they didn't have there was no 3D animation. Oh, so, you know I'm dating myself now. But, yeah, uh, way yeah, back they, when. <laughs> way back when, when we used to walk in the snow yeah. in Pittsburgh to class. That's right. Fighting off homeless people and bears. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes. Homeless people were fighting the bears, and we had to break it up. That's right. Yeah, I rode my I dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, they actually at the very end of my school there was a little bit of three, well, literally three D studio dots. Now I don't know if you know any of the oh three D software. So three D studio now Max is something I've been using for Jesus, you know, it's over, over 20 some odd years now. Really? Um, the early, early, early version of 3D Studio, 3D Studio DOS. Oh, and man. I was getting introduced to that in a, in a, in one, one class at the very end of. Just as you're leaving. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty interesting. And then started my, my, my dad actually, he had a business that had nothing to do with art or special effects that my brother was uh, working with him in. That was uh, watch brands, representing watch brands that they were selling to the duty-free industry. Oh. He was in Florida, where you're in Florida. Which part of Florida are you in again? I'm in Naples, which is like it's way beautiful. southwest. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wait, you know where Naples is? Nobody knows I where do. Naples yeah, is. I do. Yeah, because I, well, I spent time in... in Miami and Fort Lauderdale and Orlando. Oh, yeah. Been... Okay. Plus, I ran around different parts of of Florida way back when with my mentor who was a Navy SEAL vet who had a show on Discovery Channel called Future Weapons. A whole oh, yeah. Thing. Mac, Richard Mac Makowitz. We filmed all over the place in, in the U.S. and, and outside in, in different countries, but we there was some stuff like Cape, Cana Cape Canaveral. So I've I've been in some some interesting areas of Florida that yeah. uh, I don't think you know exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've well, there's places. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, my dad said, "Well, why don't you come work for me? You know, now that you're getting out of school, until you get into your field, and then you know you could you could keep." you know, setting yourself up for that. Well, you know, having a job right out of college with my dad and, and my brother was like, well, shit, that's awesome. Yeah, why not? And, but also strange because I'd never lived with my father before. So that was kind of like, I was kind of like, this could be good or this could be really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Diving in. And, uh, uh, but it was good. It was good. And, and uh, it gave me the opportunity to have work while I started actually learning a lot of digital stuff on my own and, and downloading software and doing, getting into more of the digital side and build up a reel for myself. And, and eventually I, there was a girl I was dating from college who was a dancer because the, 
the Art Institute had dorms at a school called Point Park College that had a dance program. Oh. You know, and this is this is you're like, dude, you love my mom. She's she. We were visiting the school. When we first visited the school, and we're looking at the dorms, and we're looking at the the dance side. Mm-hmm. She's looking at she's looking in the empty dance dancer room. She's like, oh, you know what? You're gonna come to school here, and you're gonna meet a beautiful dancer, and you're gonna start <laughs> probably getting a relationship. And I'm like, yeah, mom, <laughs> put that out there. Let's manifest. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Thanks for looking out, ma. <laughs> uh, you know, and my mom is like definitely has superpowers. My mom literally is psychic, and like I'm connected to her, and I'm very close to her, and like yeah. she's amazing. And like, and that's what happened, you know. And it was, it was so, <laughs> so mom's like, you know, working her magic. <laughs> there you go. Good looking out. <laughs> yeah, but I ended up going to Chicago because. Um, the relationship I was in, we were in love. We were together for years, and yeah, understudy at a dance company in Chicago, and and I was like, you know what? I went and visited, and I love the city. And she's like, why don't you come here for, you know, just try it out. You know, I know we know you want to go to L.A., but and I did. My whole family was like, oh man, you're you're are you you're like you're not. That's that's not what you want to do. You're going. You want to go to L.A. And I'm like, yes, I still will go to L.A. It's not going to take me off the path, but. I'm just going to go try it. It's okay. Right. This is still West. Yeah, it's it's on the way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know. I get it. I'm with you. (laughs) You know. Yeah. And I'll tell you, man, like, I ended up being there for three and a half years, but, and I literally had like, I had like $400 in my pocket. Oh, man. But she helped me get a job at at a hotel she was working at. Oh, um, I ended up working for multi different multimedia companies Smart. and became really good friends with a buddy of mine named Jeremy Cook, who's who's still one of my closest friends. Mm-hmm. We became tight. We moved to LA together. Smart. And eventually um, the job I got at Blur Studio, which was a place I was pursuing and showed him. I'm like, dude, this is place, Blur, check it out. There's this whole article on Blur in a, in a magazine called Windows NT Magazine. Oh, you're in. This is like <laughs> this is like super <laughs> geeky special effects stuff, bro. Sure, sure. Nobody knows the fucking magazine, you know. This is, you know, but this is, it. But this is also, you know, back in the day when we didn't have internet. Right, right. We, what would you do? You know. Yeah. Your magazines. We had Fangoria. We had Cinemagic. Right. Cinemagic. I think was the same people who made Fangoria. It was like it was like a it was like a in, it was like a do it yourself. It was so cool, man. Cinemagic would show you how to do stuff on your own, and they oh, would have what like tutorials. Articles. Oh yeah, so cool. What? That's awesome. It was it was YouTube of its time in a magazine. Yeah. <laughs> They would show little short films that people made, and that'd be at festivals. And here's how you could do miniatures and this and that. And it was, it was great, you know. And wow. Yeah. So all these magazines, you know, uh, Cinefx, which which still is around. But yeah. It was oh man, Cinefx was like the creme de la creme, like the. That's the good one. Magazine. Yeah, that's the one that you couldn't wait to get your hands on. It'd yeah. Like the new thing, right? Mm-hmm. But. Uh, uh, Windows NT magazine was this totally obscure nerd visual effects magazine, and uh, and I showed my buddy Jeremy this whole article on Blur and, and their culture, and they played Quake and and they they made sci-fi cool stuff. And, yeah, you found your people. Yeah, exactly. And um, I had gotten a job at a small boutique visual effects studio called Maxine Cafe. Then he, but he got the job at Blur. Oh, and yeah, because he he had much more of a sci-fi, like, like he just was. Jeremy was just so much more talented in the sci-fi way of creating what he created. So he was much more suited with me. He was like, ah, you still need to work on stuff. And so I went and got experience. Right, a ton of fucking experience at Max Inc. with uh, 
uh, Todd Perry and uh, Jennifer Champagne. Todd Perry taught me. Uh, I actually just hung out with him the other day. He's, we've known each other for over 20 years. He's a VFX supervisor now. Taught right me compos- Taught me a bunch of stuff. I love this guy. Uh, and then Jeremy. Uh, well, I became friends with him and a bunch of people at Blur, and eventually they they uh, had me start work there. And um, a couple of years later, went to work at Blur, and, and then was there for 18 years. And nice. Crazy ass journey happened there. Sure. Do you remember your first uh, like professional gig? I believe. I believe the. I'm trying to remember if this was the very first, but Stanley Seventh Portal. No way. Yeah. What? Uh, I want to say. I can't remember if that was the very first one. It's been a long time, but that was a <laughs> very early, early one. Sure. That was dream come true there. I was like, fuck, yeah. Yeah. Stanley. Dude. And it was amazing because that's when he was like doing his own thing. Yeah. You know, he was, he was, um, I don't even know if he had POW yet, but there's a wonder. I think it was Stan Lee. I'm trying to remember. I don't know what, because he's changed his company name a couple times. Yeah. And that's where he created this whole new cadre of superheroes. And there was this villain called Mongor. And Mongor was like Skeletor, like a kind of like a Skeletor meets. Thanos ish kind of way about him. Yeah. And uh it was a ride film we did. Oh, really? Yep. And um Stan Lee I just looked it up. Stan Lee Media Productions is what it was back then. I like it. I like it. Yeah. And I what was cool was that's when I started to figure out that I loved animation and what we were calling layout or animatics. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we do with that is when we're either taking keyframe animation or the motion capture that we captured and we're mapping on to the character rigs. Mm -hmm. So the character rigs are driven by our performance and then we're laying it out into the 3d environment so that we could start creating whatever the piece is with cameras and stitching. Cause we gotta, you know, you gotta stitch. When you shoot motion capture, you know, it's it's not traditional sense that, you know, film you shoot shot by shot. You may shoot multi cameras of an action, whereas when you when you capture motion capture, and I'm sure T J went over some of this when you guys talked, mm-hmm. you're shooting you're shooting a complete action that is once you've captured it, you can film it from any angle. Right. You, right? You're digitally mapping onto a character that's gonna be in three D space. So um, so when you lay it out into the 3D world, now you're starting to put the pieces of what you shot, your action pieces in there. It's like a play. It's like, you know, it's like you're, you're putting it on stage and then you're figuring out, oh, like this should happen here. And then they should move to this piece and that piece. And Right, right. But you got to build that first. You got to put the yeah. tools out and then they can play with them. Yep, exactly. And um, I got to do some of that on the Stan Lee piece. And it started kind of me choosing a path towards more of the animation stuff. Because we were all, when, when I started at Florida, we were 20 people. Really? Yeah, it was it was like, it was a pirate ship. Yeah. <laughs> it was, we were all generalists, basically, because we sure. didn't have pipe lines. We didn't have departments. Um, there was our first uh, female artist, her name was Z Jones. Great name. Who was a badass, badass uh, three uh, character modeler who she now is a traditional artist as well as a 3D artist. She does these really beautiful Japanese tattoo almost style uh, art pieces like koi and stuff as well as her 3D really? art. Oh, yeah. But we were all we were all just like generalists. You know, we, we, we would all kind of do a little bit of everything. We'd all do some modeling and some texturing and some lighting and animating. It's like, it's like these are your shots. 
So you got to fully be responsible for these shots or this is your scene, you know, which was amazing because you would learn so much. I we bet. Would, we, yeah, we would do these um, these WB interstitials. Oh, sweet! Every um, yeah, WB on the on the channel on the network between shows, you would see the WB logo going through these little animated adventures. Mm-hmm. So instead of two D animation, it was three D animation, and these things would be so fast; they'd be like five seconds, ten seconds, I think fifteen or twenty tops. But they were an awesome school of filmmaking because you you get a storyboard that usually uh, uh, Chuck Chuck Wojtkiewicz, big shout out to him. Chuck yeah. is an artist we worked with for a long time. Another great guy you could have on, by the way. Done. A talented artist, two D two D concept storyboards. He would he would um, he was great. His style was so great for this stuff. He would do these great storyboards, and then you'd go off and and eventually because I was a guy that would do. I would be able to animate and and what we called scene assembly, which is the lighting and final rendering and compositing. Mm-hmm. I would sometimes do a whole one of these on my own, take it from really. The end. So I'd lay it out, I'd animate it, I'd light it, texture it, render it, composite it, and boom, dude. And so it was great. It was like you were making your own short films, and I learned so much from those that I that I started putting into my own layout and and, and action design and. You know, when you're being smart about your your line of action and your cameras and your editing, and, and uh, that was that was amazing. Sure. And did did schooling going for like the art that you did did that any way prepare you for this? Because it's so like it Absolutely. seems like you, you got in like right when it's and here we go like everything was kicking yeah. off. It, even though I did not get you know training for computer stuff. Mm-hmm. All the traditional arts absolutely translate because that's cool. We were we were learning design. We actually we were learning 3D design. We were learning orthographics, how to see something from a left view, a right view, X, Y, Z. What does that all mean? Mm-hmm. But doing it, it with traditional design on paper, right? Sure. And the other huge thing that I, that I talked to a lot of people about that I, that I think is a little bit of, of something that, that I, I think all filmmakers need to learn, all artists need to learn, and some do and some don't, depends on their, their background, mm-hmm. is you come into class and everybody puts their art up on the wall. Ooh. And the first, yeah, yeah exactly, so you're already seeing <laughs> Yeah. Thing that happens, right, is you put your art up on the wall and you look at your stuff compared to everybody else, and you go, "Oh shit!" Yeah, <laughs> that guy next to me just blew my fucking doors off. Right? Whoa. What have I done? <laughs> the fuck! And that's without anybody saying anything, right? You're just like, "Damn, I got a lot to do." Yeah. So, and it wasn't it wasn't a shame thing. It wasn't mm-hmm. about shame. It was about let's everybody. Put their homework up and see how it's going. Right. And let's all talk about all of our work and, and let's analyze. So, but of course, by design, you're going to see who's kicking ass this week. And it's healthy because you, you need you need that sort of um, objectivity. Right. Critique. Like examples. Examples. And, and so – then the teacher would – we'd have a, a class discussion, and, you know, you could talk about why you're sucking right now and where yeah. you need to go. <laughs> sure. You'll get notes, you know, and then – but the beauty of it is if you iterate and you, you come back next week and, you know, took the notes into consideration and did better, you you, you went up next week. You're like, oh, cool. I'm doing better. Actually, I'm getting close to that guy and, and didn't get my doors blown off this week. And then hopefully – Maybe you're blowing everybody's doors off, you know, and, and it's healthy critique because it what it did is it helped you to get training to be a production artist, uh, not a artist. Sure. That's smart. Very, yes. A very big difference. Yeah. In, in this industry, that's what we are. Whether, And that's not just for visual effects artists. That's whether you are an actor, you are a writer, you are a director – Music, 
you name it, every part of what goes into the making of a film, a game, a short, music, whatever it is, we're production artists because we have to iterate. We're going to get notes. Yep. We've got to tweak it. Stories are going to change. Ideas, different ideas are going to come in. There's going to be mm-hmm. different, many, you know, cooks in the kitchen. And you've got to be adaptable. And you've got to be able to take the notes and go, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, you want to do this instead and take that piece out and add this? Yeah, let's do that. Let's iterate. Right, or, right. well, it sucks. It's not looking good. It's not there yet. And get your shit torn up and go, all right, oh, fuck, let's, let's go back and let's do something different. Totally. And for sure, blurry. Like you got your ass kicked. It was boot yeah. camp. <laughs> That's how you learn, and, though. Yeah, absolutely, it's how you learn. And, and 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 Tim Miller, who was our fucking the dude, our guy, our captain. Yeah. You know, like he didn't hold back. You know, and and he was very. He was a straight shooter. He was very honest. You know, he he told you when it sucked, and and gave you good notes. To go, all right. This is this is this is what we should do to 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 steer it in this direction, and vice versa. When it's on point, you're like, all right, you're on point. Great, keep going. There you go. That's you what know? you need. And uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, you learn a lot from that, and and you learn how to get a thick skin and 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 yeah. um, become you know part of a team and and collaborate. Him and I are definitely we, we were two stubborn guys, so I definitely bumped heads <laughs> with him for sure. And I, I was never a yes man. I, I could just never be that, you know. So right. I, I, the guy that you know, if I felt strongly about something, I was going to argue it and and be like, yeah, no, I think that's no. I think Captain America would be punching this way. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a martial arts background. And you don't. The that's way right. You want to punch. <laughs> I'm just saying. But if you want to punch like a pussy, that's right. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> You're like, trust me, I'm also like, from New York, all right? I know how we punch. <laughs> yeah. 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 By the way, Captain America's from Brooklyn. Seriously, come on. You know, I'm just saying, they have a specific <laughs> movement. You know, like It was like, well, I'm arguing with, you know, my boss about, you know, Captain America punching this way, you know. Right, it's, right. It's good problem. I mean, as you should, because in the end, it's like, yeah, you were right. You're right. That's that's a Brooklyn punch if I've ever seen one. So, yeah. Well, well <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's something that, is important to all teams is that building teams that you trust. Yes. Much that you can have. Yeah. Right. You can have for sure. Very. Hopefully have very healthy. It takes time, but you have to have very healthy conversations about this stuff. I agree. You don't know. I mean, who wants yes men around them? You know I mean? Like that's just dictators. That's just people who want to just dominate. Right. It's like, true. That's true. And collaboration is always best. And like games, movies, entertainment is like, in my opinion, the most collaborative art there is because there's so many people involved oh, all yeah. trying to do the best that you can do, you know? So it's like you need contribution Down. for collaboration. That's how that works. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and look, I, the, the best leaders know that you always want to have people around you that are smarter than you, that have different skill sets, you that have specialties that you don't have. Absolutely. And create this magic. Totally agree. So then I, how did you go from artist doing like animation interstitials to being like an actor doing stunts for performance capture? They, I, there's not a clear road between these two usually. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, Blur had purchased a Vicon motion capture system. Oh. Brilliant. On, on And that was definitely... Tim and his partners at that time, you know, he was smart to go like, look, we're, what we're doing, we're not doing traditional animation. Right. We're doing that's based on real movement. So the smart, that was a very, very smart thing to go like, let's get mocap, let's get our own equipment and we can do it in house. We can capture stuff and it'll be much faster. Yeah, for sure. And I was like, oh, this is great. I, um, I at let's see at that time I was training with my teacher who I mentioned before Richard Mac Makowitz he was mm-hmm. a Navy SEAL vet who had created his own self protection based martial arts system. Nice. He called Bukido. 
he wrote a book called Unleash the Warrior Within, which was his philosophy for that martial art in a book that really applies to everything and anything. Sure. He was a, he was a hand-to-hand combat instructor, and when he came out of the SEALs, was doing different work. He was doing private investigating. He was doing um, executive protection, and he was teaching women self his style of self-protection training. That's cool. So it was designed out of that, and then he he decided, well, I can teach men and women this. So I was training with him. He became uh, he changed my life in every way. He was a mentor in everything, and, and right so I we started not only training but making stuff. And I was so I was also starting to do some acting stuff, and and uh, so doing acting in martial arts outside of Blur made me kind of go like, oh, you know, I should. This Moshi Cap stuff is cool. I should right. you know, start helping play with that. So really, my instructor, Mac, and Mac had a second instructor named Christopher Hicks, who I was training with both of them. Uh, and Chris Chris is a, a phenomenal martial artist who, uh, you know, he'd been a martial artist since he was a kid. And Chris also had some great acting skills, and Mac had acting skills. So they were my, they were the first, guys I was bringing in to actually do fight choreography with in motion capture for blur. Oh, cool. And it was amazing. Cause the, the stuff we were doing was, was for reality. It wasn't, it wasn't traditional high flying, fancy martial arts to look pretty. It was for brutal, realistic stuff. Right. It's practical. So, yeah. So we had, um, uh, there was a fight club game that we that we did. Oh, sweet! Way, yeah. And um, they came in, and and we did, and I, you know, figured out some cool stuff with them, and and it was brutal, and it was great, and it was perfect for that, and it just started building because people were liking what we were doing, and and more clients wanted action, and um, it grew. That's and really we, cool. Yeah, it was it was, and then I started jumping in the suit with them, and the three of us doing stuff, and um, we were just doing more, more games, more action. We did a bunch of Marvel stuff uh, way back when uh, we did uh, X Men. I remember this X Men Legends commercial that was live action CG mix. Oh what? And yeah, and Mac literally played every character in it. Oh. Uh, it was a- it was literally just me and him in the volume, just running around. All right, now you're Cyclops and you're <laughs> <laughs> touch your temple, you touch know. your temple. <laughs> now you're Iceman and you're 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 hitting the Sentinel and lifting him up and throwing him into the tornado that Storm created and shooting him up and I mean it was yeah it was it was really awesome, uh, you know and and we did some really really cool stuff that that. Even as old as that is, I still look back and I'm like, man, we did some really great stuff. And Tim, Tim, loving it. And, and yeah, we were geeks at the same time because we were all working on these characters that we all love. Right. What a cool thing to like fall into. It's pretty interesting. If there's one thing that I've learned in over a hundred episodes of this show is like luck really is preparation meets opportunity. And it's kind yeah, of interesting absolutely. that like you were already doing martial arts and stuff like that and doing animation. And then this opportunity pops up. It's like, why not both? It's it's also, yes, and it's what's amazing about technology, right, and what's amazing about motion capture. Yeah, for sure. But now we are merging with animation in a way that had never been possible before. True, true. Especially now. I, always, I mean, goodness. Yeah, it's crazy. I had I say all the time, like, if I went back in time, to myself as a kid reading comic books, reading Marvel comics and DC comics and being blown away by star Wars. The thing that set me on the path yeah. and said, Oh, Hey, by the way, uh, how you doing kid? So see all those characters. Yeah. You're going to, um, you're actually going to design action for them. Dude. And, uh, Oh, actually you're also going to play them. You're actually going to, you'll, you're going to be a Jedi. You're going to be Batman. You're going to be Captain America. You're going to be these characters also with your buddies. Yeah. Making it. I would look up at myself and be like, who the fuck are you, pal? You're yeah, crazy. yeah. <laughs> Why do you kind of look like me? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, what? what? Hell, huh? Yeah. Motion capture, what's that? Yeah, exactly. Right? 
<laughs> don't make me angry. You, know, he, you won't like me when I'm angry. Yeah, don't make me angry. Let me finish my Hulk comic. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm trying to draw Ninja Stars here, all right? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's and so every funny. Time, every time I work on specific intellectual property, specific characters, my literally this vibration, this chill goes through me because I'm like, oh, my God. You're doing it's it. Oh, my God. It's Jedi Knights. Oh, my God. It's yeah. Marvel Heroes. You know? Oh, my God. It's, it's like what you know and i've done stuff to the hulk too that i'm like whoa dude you know it's it just it just it really is manifestation on this crazy level that that you just go like you really can make your dreams come true if you if you believe in yourself and you just go fuck it and go after because because and mac would say this and we'd also talk about this in zen buddhism where you know having courage is, is not knowing going for it anyway yeah totally totally that's like one, one of my favorite carrie fisher quotes uh she talks about she says be afraid but do it anyway the confidence will follow yeah and i was like that yep her. she just knew she, she just knew <laughs> yeah Man. absolutely so did you did you work on knights of the old republic too because no knights of the old republic i did not it was um it's uh so the it was um the old republic games were um just i think it was just the old republic i think they were called oh right 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 with the uh the huge like cinematic duels with all the sith and stuff like that yeah like, oh. those were all my yep dude. so we did dude we yeah so and there was a wrong, I don't know if you got a chance to to, to see the real i I, oh, yeah. I sent you that book. I did. Uh, as if I like, hadn't I, already I, seen I, it, yeah. Darren. Come on. <laughs> well, no, I, don't, I don't. Let me tell you something, bro. I, I'm never one of those guys. No ego. I don't assume shit. You that, know. That's why know. I had you on the show. I was like, if you know how cool you are, then I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's right. There you go. I gotta be the one to tell uh, you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need you telling you. That's my job. So I have you on, I'm like, hey, you're great. But if you were like, yeah, I know. Like, well, then what am I here for? You know what I mean? It's a niche. <laughs> I, I Also, just with that said, I don't really want to acknowledge you, man. I love what you're doing. I think it's the, oh, the show was great. I, I listened to T's episode, and I want to dive into other ones. Like, the podcast format, is, I think, is really amazing. And there's, there's, it's really grown as this beautiful thing that, you know, it's kind of like, remember how DVDs would have those special features where we get to watch the – the uh, director and maybe an actor talk about Fight Club, you know, yes. like, hey, that adventure talk, right? And they're amazing, right? But yeah. now, now we've got YouTube and podcasts where we could do this and, and people get this whole other insight into stuff that was never available before. Yes, totally. That's kind of like my, my objective with the show because I've been doing this for we were the three and a half years almost now. Oh, great, and man. my whole thing is like, I I'm an actor as well, so I one I'm just stealing all of your secrets. Um, but two, yeah. it's it's like I get to I'll see something, I'll enjoy it, and then I'm like I wonder who like why do I have this thing right? Somebody put their time and effort, skills and talents into this thing to give it to me. I enjoyed it, so I want to get to know the person behind that. It's like I know your work. I'm a big fan of your work, but I want to get to know you. And then like I you know really hit it off with TJ, and he was great. And he's like you got to have Darren on. I was like friend of yours is a friend of mine let's do this and that kind of snowballed here so i love being able to tell your story because people love the old republic they love these things that you've done but it's like now check out who the person is that does that you know it's fun <laughs> it's fun i like it Pete, some of my favorite and like fun days in mocap is with tj because i bet i mean you know you you've you've so you've had this conversation with him and you, you already know what kind of guy is but yeah. he is we just fucking laugh and just like, yeah, it's just hysterical. Like he, you know, he, so he's got the Mind's Eye Tribe, which he does. Yes. great. gives great teaching, uh, which is unique because of his skill set. Mm -hmm. And I've done talks for him at other classes he's, he's taught. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tell stories about our experiences as lessons and laugh about it at the same time. And, because he's been doing this a long time and, and I've been doing this a long time and, and um, you know, he's just 
one of the many friends in my life that when I get to hire and have on my stunt team, yeah, bro, I say when I say it's pure bliss that you know that we get to we're bringing Star Wars to life, we're bringing this IP to life, that IP to life. It's it's crazy, crazy magic because they're they're all unicorn. Yeah, he's a unicorn. He really is. He's like he's he's what I call a light of a human being. It's like he just walk. It's just something. He's something extra. He's something extra. uber yeah. talented, super nice, and he's one of those people that like. When you're talking to him, you're like, "Wow, I'm my life is just better right now," and I can't explain it. It might yeah. be the hair, but I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's just and the I, best. And I, I, yeah, and I tell people like in in motion capture, and this goes kind of across all media, but motion capture more specifically, there's sort of these three categories of of talent where you have you have dramatic actor, yep, action actor, and full tilt stunt performer. Right, and now of course within stunts, there's a million branches of specificity that stunt performers have from different martial arts skills to rigging to car hits to fire and all that. But let's just say full tilt stunt performer, and I say that the action actor is they're they're the one in the middle. Right. That in my experience, they are an actor who let's say someone like yourself, where we could be working together and then. I see you kind of really taking well the fight choreography, or maybe it's tactical gun movement, and it's like, hey Brian, you know, you got some, you got some skills, bro. Like if you, if you train in some other stuff like sword or maybe more guns, like you will be an action actor if you want to go down that route. Right. And some actors do, and they and they listen and they go, oh fuck yeah, well, well, who you recommend, and then we'll send them off to train with some some badasses that we know, yeah. and they will become. A full-on action actor, my buddy Noshir Dalal, who's another fucking great yes. guy to have on, by the way. Dude, put in a Noshir, good word. I'm trying. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he'll totally come on. Like Noshir is great. He's got a play going on out here. I know you're in Florida, but he's you know, great. Comes on stage. Red Dead man. Noshir, what's that? He's Red Dead. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah. But Noshir was one of those guys. I was introduced to him from my friend Courtney Munch, who's an also amazing fucking unicorn talent. We were doing our own acting training together at Blur in Blur's little theater room on, like once a week, and she was telling me about No Sheer. She's like, Darren, she's like, you really, you got to meet No Sheer. He's he's such a great actor, and he's he's got martial skills. He's got good tactical movement. I'm like, great, yeah. So he he started coming to our our acting training that we were doing, and he was awesome. We became close friends, and and I'm like, I fucking love you, dude, and. First thing I hired him for was uh, a division trailer we, that we did. Oh, sweet! The one where um, Dave Wilson was directing it. He came up with this great idea of uh, tragedy. Is I think it was tragedy is inv- is invisible. Oh, theme like of it. it. It's it's really cool. It's uh, it was brilliant. This idea that Dave came up with, where it starts out with a, with a what looks like somebody's thrown out out of a window smash out of like a brownstone in downtown New York snow hits the roof of a car hits the ground and you don't see anything it looks like a ghost is being thrown out the window you just see the footprints and the smash and the shit flying up and you hear actually it's my voice over here oh, oh, oh. And it's like what the fuck is going on here and eventually yeah. the guy crawls up to a foot and it's the division agent Ooh. and then we reveal the guy all busted up yeah it's really cool. I'll send you a link but anyway please I had no sheer on that he crushed it, and then like that was it, man. We never looked back. I tried. I got him on everything and anything I could as much as possible because he could. He could. He could do it all. He can. He could do fight choreo. He could. He was his weapon. His gun movement is is just excellent. His pistol and rifle movement. And uh, but anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> uh, so he's he's become this incredibly talented unicorn that can he can act really well and he can do action really well so he's he's both um and then it's the other way sometimes it's a stunt performer who's amazing at whether it's martial arts or good wire gags or acrobatic stuff Mm -hmm. who has some good acting skill and you go hey uh you know your acting's good like if you get like if you continue training and work on your acting like you're gonna be one of those unicorns you're gonna be a good action actor um, Stephen O. Young is a, is, is a, an example who's um, Mr. Negative in uh, the Spider-Man game. Yeah. 
Steven, I've known him for years. He's been on all of the Star Wars stuff that we did. Had him on, on uh, Jedi Fallen Order with me. And we're, the Old Republic trailer where uh, it's the third one where the Sith Lord takes out the Sith Inquisitor. Well, he wasn't a Sith Lord at that time. He was rising up to become a Sith Lord by killing his master's Inquisitor. Yes. Steve was on the ground. Like, that was – I mean, everybody plays – multiple people play multiple characters, right? It's, it's like stunt guys played, acting people played. So I played some characters, but like Philip Severa played some of them. Steve played them. Like, everybody's played a little bit of everything mixed in. But just one it. moment, like, Steve was on the ground acting like the Inquisitor stabbed, and he's doing all this great – we didn't capture his face, but it was good for reference and his body. And, and then I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm Darth Malgus killing him. <laughs> and then I go, damn, Steve, I'm like, your fucking acting's great, bro. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. Like, no, dude, seriously, like your acting is good. Like you should act more. He's like, no, no, no. He's being all humble about it. Sure. Now I'm not saying I'm taking credit for his acting kid. Is that what I'm saying? Right. right yeah. You're like, I'm me. feeling it. <laughs> I'm, but he really went after it, and he is fucking crushing it. And he's he's the thing about Steve is that he's not only um, a great martial artist, action actor. He's also fucking comedic. Yeah, and that's like a, that's like another level where the, the guys who could be comedic and funny and can do physical comedy is another level. I love, because I love, absolutely love comedy action. Like, our, when we every time we get to do, like, stuff like Cage 6 or Deadpool or any of the comedic stuff, it's like, yeah. ah. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because you get to flex a whole other le- leg and wings, you know, because it's like, well, it's comedy. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just got to be funny with some cool action, right? Right. I'm obviously fine, but, you know, you can get away with more. You don't have to explain everything, right? It's like, sure. if the gag is fun, we win, right? That's all you need. Yeah, it's not like... The strategy and tactics have to make a, a specific sense because it's fucking Deadpool and he does crazy shit, or it's Cade and he does some crazy shit, right? Exactly. So he's, you know, he's great with that. There's another guy, Seth Austin, uh, who is fucking amazing. He's really good with his acting, dramatic. Uh, he's a great stuntman. Another guy I could put on the wire. I could spin him, fly him, and he's comedic. He could totally. I just actually we just did we just shot a fun. I can't say what it is, but we just had a really fun audition mm-hmm. for a project I'm, I'm coordinating now that's coming up that I want him to play his character for. And so we did this really great uh, audition where we choreographed all these fun beats that I did with him, and we had a blast. And he's just like, it's just, these are the people that when you, you get to work with, like, it's just, life is just easier and it's more fun. And it truly is following your bliss because we're all just getting to bring our fun unicorn talents together to just bring these these characters to life, you know, for entertainment. Yeah, I love that. Like, there. So you know the the traditional triple threat. You know, singing, dancing, acting. But like, you have your own kind of triple threat within this ecosystem. It's really cool. I like that a lot. I feel very blessed. It's 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 the amalgamation of of martial skills I've trained in and in acting and and even comedic training I've done mixed with the filmmaking aspect of the action design because I really, really love doing camera work and editing and shooting pre-visualizations of everything I do is so much fun for me. It's such a joy. I bet. And I feel incredibly fortunate. I have so much gratitude for for every job and every team I get to work with and it's it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think it also helps that like if you have like the rapport, you know, with your team, like I think you just make better stuff. You know, if you're comfortable well, enough and you're back and forth, then, like, it becomes a fun thing, you know? So it's like you want to work with the people that you know and get along with, and it just, it's just better. The food tastes better at the end if you like food. You for know? sure. It's, it's, it's shorthand. You know, yeah, you have your for sure. You, you start reading each other's minds. Uh, what happens is there's there's less, like, notation on stuff because you start to understand each other and, like, hey, you see that moment right there? And it's like, oh, yeah, I totally get that. Yep, that, I, I'm, I've got egg. Right. I'll, clean that up. I'll I'll make that connection. Egg egg is a term in stunts where it's like you have egg on the face, meaning like it's eggy where like maybe there's a little too much pause before the hit or the hit doesn't look quite strong or whatever, right? It's a little eggy. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so um stuff like that you can clean up in motion capture through animation afterwards, but mm-hmm. obviously we wanna always perform in the suit as 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 
close to real as we possibly can to, to save work of animators. You know? Sure. So I'm curious, what because you you've coordinated stunts a lot. Is there yeah, that's what I'm, like that's how, what I am now? Yeah, Old you're like. Stunt. So as a stunt coordinator, like, what does that job entail, and how exactly do you even do that? Because it's it's like I know what the two words mean. I know coordination, and I know what stunts are, but I don't know exactly what entails a stunt coordinator. Well, for uh, so it's there's you know there's games, there's TV, there's film. And stunt coordinator, just like any stunt performer, it's a broad spectrum, right? And, mm-hmm. and uh, there's different levels of responsibility. For sure. And, and obviously coordinators have different specialties. So I've been focused in the realm of motion capture because that's how I came up through visual effects and motion capture, right? Right. So um, I have done action design for feature films, but it's on a previous level, level which I can explain further later but Mm -hmm. mainly as a coordinator for what i do let's take uh jedi fallen order as an example yeah uh it 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 all starts with story right so Mm -hmm. it's it's you know basically we start the conversation with story and it's kind of like all right so the game is roughly going to be about this and the cinematics are going to be roughly this and this and this and this Mm -hmm. and our schedule you know there'll, there'll be a rough schedule and um, then we'll start budgeting and and locking down how we want the schedule to play out to move forward with the action design. Um, sometimes there's storyboards, sometimes there's not. Uh, oh. Sometimes there's also what are, what are called board board uh, excuse me boardomatics. So that's a that's a storyboard in a edited form with sound design. Oh, cool. And like temp vo, mm-hmm. uh, which are which are great also because you get to see uh, a visualization of what's going on and then some pacing. Um, and sometimes uh, the benefit of those is kind of like, hey, this is our time frame. Uh, we really want to stick to this as much as we can uh, because so we want to stick to this time frame because uh, we don't want to go over this, right? Right. Um, like an example of that is like. Uh, I've got an Apex Legend short coming out cool. in April. It's, uh, um, well, I can't say what it is yet, but mm-hmm. um, it's great because they, uh, uh, Neil, I think he pronounced his last name, Upade. Neil, if I'm messing up your last name, I apologize. <laughs> he, he writes and, and directs these, and it's great because um, uh, he's, he's like, and he knows animation. He's a creative director respawn, and he really understands what he's looking for. So, it's a little more locked down as far as okay. Here's the story. Here's the board of Maddox, Let's stick to this time, and then let's let's figure out the choreography with, within there. And then we go off and and um, well, whether it's that or it's Star Wars. Star Wars. We didn't have we had some storyboards, but it was more of like we had the story. Um, the the benefit of the storyboards is we could we could move some, through some things and stick to it. Don't necessarily need to do. Uh, what I call stunt viz, which is a pre pre visualization of the action. Oh yeah, I always okay. like to do that as much as possible. Yeah, because it's it's rehearsal. Right. We'll shoot it and edit it, and so you can see the pacing. Uh, for Star Wars, I was I, there was more time, so I was given a time. They were like, "Look, you tell us what you need to be able to do your pre viz, so you can go off with your team and do that," which was awesome. Mm-hmm. And got to 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 do that chunk by chunk, you know, cinematic portion by cinematic portion. So what that entails is then I start to gather the unicorns. That's right. And, call the team. You know, Blow the conch shell. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and you bring bring in everybody who's got their, their specialties that are great for the characters. And, and then we rehearse and then we shoot and then I'll edit. I'll, you know, put sound and special effects in there, and uh, and then we start presenting and iterating based on that, and and we go back and forth, and then I show it to. Uh, there's a lot of uh, creatives for different departments in the games, uh, mm-hmm. which is which is great because like it's a game, so it's got to work not just for story, but it's got to work for the dynamics of the game. It's got to work for the character. Lucasfilm's got to sign off and make sure they're cool and we're on brand. Right. Uh, the respawn team is amazing. They're 
uh, the, the writing. I mean, everybody's everybody's passionate in every department there, and um, uh, so it's great when everybody is on board and it's all working, and we get notes and iterate, and then everybody feels heard, and it's wonderful. I I, I had this intention um, the whole time with the stunt team was I said we turn notes into gold because we're going to iterate and there's going to be a lot of voices that have to be heard on this. Right. And so we're just going to lay out the buffet. There you go. Cool action design. We have some fish. We have some steak. You're vegan. You're vegetarian. Great. We've got wonderful veggies and vegan dishes here. We've got some wonderful desserts too. Here it all is. Right. A little bit of everything. Yeah. And then when they pick what they like, great. For us, it's not a problem because we're like, look, it's all good. Right, it's right. It's all great. We love all of it. You just tell us what you want and don't want, and we'll tweak and move forward and get it to where it needs to be. And uh, and that's the joy and fun of that, especially when you have the right team around you. And, and you know, we could – look, you, we can do amazing choreo all day, but mm-hmm. ultimately – it's got to serve the story. It's got to serve the character. And when it's something that is not just a film but a game, which has hours and hours of play that, that we that the audience, that the game player has to enjoy, you know, there's a lot of other bells and whistles we want to hit and make sure we're on target for. Right. Really nice to to have the opportunity to, to dial all that in. So does this stuff come, does it just come from your head? Like when you're building out scenes and like fight choreography and stuff, you're like, oh, this would be kind of neat to put here. This would be kind of neat to put here. Yeah, yeah, but but that's definitely insane. What happens is the way I approach it is once I know the story, once I know the characters, mm-hmm. then I start to go, okay, what are the weapons? Because right. every hero and villain, whether it's open handed combat or it's weapon based. They're going to have a unique style. Sure. So, um, I mean, and, the, and these are questions that actors would ask too in study of acting, right? It's like, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, for example, if it's a Jedi and it's Cal Kestis, well, you know, where in this point in their life are they? You know, whether it's a, some other Jedi or it's Cal, it's like, is this a Jedi that has reached Jedi yet or he's a Padawan? You know, Cal is unique. He hadn't become a full Jedi yet. So his skill set. It's based on training he got from his master, Jaro, but, you know, he lost Jaro and he went off into the world and became a scrapper. So his style of fighting is going to be different because he's been learning stuff in the real world in a scrappy kind of street smart thing, which is very, right? You know, versus, oh, is this a mercenary? Is it a bounty hunter? What is the level of experience this character has? How they've been living? How they've been developing their skills? And what weapons do they use and deploy? And then, and then, where are we in this particular fight? Because the character, the environment is as much of a character as the character, and the weapons are characters, right? So they're all key pieces that help to start to go. Oh, cool. Well, based on all this, this is ways I see that we can utilize all of this to tell the story and have us learn something about the character, and learn something about the world, and learn something about the weapons, and not do just fancy stuff for fancy sake because it looks cool. I never, ever approach that. And I've told all of my stunt team, any choreographer that I've hired and worked with or anybody I've coordinated with Mm -hmm. that I don't do fancy for fancy's sake. Everything is tactical. It has purpose. It's based on what their training is, their experience, and why are they there and what they're using and what they're going after. What is their goal? Right? I love that. And that's that's what an actor would do for characters. Like, well, Yeah, exactly. Am I, am I, am I, at what age am I? You know, how much experience do I have? Why am I, why am I going after this person? Or why am I running away? Or what am I, why am I trying to get this thing, you know? Right. Where am I at in my head right now so that I move accordingly? Exactly. Motivation. Motivation. So, you know, when it's all has tactical nature to it, a tactical thinking and mindset to it, um, it just helps flesh out the story and has reason behind it. And, and look, and this is stuff I learned from, you know, being, being around a Navy SEAL veteran for 15 years of my life. You know, Mac was all about tactical thinking. Right. Right. 
Everything Maybe. deliberate, okay. no wasted movement. Everything about his philosophy was that way. Um, and and I have another friend, crazy coincidence, who's a Navy SEAL veteran uh, named Cal Vega, who's, who's a buddy who I hire on as a consultant. For projects. Oh, smart. Uh, you know. Yeah, Use Max, unfortunately. Uh, exactly. I, I lost Max. He passed away uh, about three years ago now. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's a part of everything I do. I would not be able to do anything I would do if I didn't have him in my in his training in my life. But crazy coincidence that I've got another Navy SEAL veteran in my life that I that I that I train with. He's also a Kundalini yoga teacher as well as an actor and producer, and and um, he's one of my go-to's for consulting and, and stuff depending on the project. And um, so those those are the things I like to put into which generates all that thought and thinking. And, and it's also great when you have a background of knowledge going, well, I know who Darth Vader is and I, right. I still knowing him doesn't mean you're going to do it right. It's like, it's Vader. So we've got to really honor Vader and go, well, why, why would he do what he's doing in this place? And what are the tactics he would use against this level of character who is just becoming a Jedi? You know? Yeah. Do you find that, like, working with, like, superheroes or characters like Darth Vader and stuff like that, is there more pressure when doing, like, fights for them? Yes, but it's I love that kind of pressure. That's yeah, like, you thrive on it? Well, yeah, because that's, that's the ultimate dream. It's like... That's true. That I is mean, true. As soon as I read the script of the game and Vader popped up in the script, I was like, fuck! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's oh how I felt playing it, too. You're like, oh, no! It, <laughs> Oh my god! I literally got chills reading it, and when I circled back with the respawn team, I was like, "Holy fucking shit! Are you kidding me?" They're like, "Yep, man. yep." And I'm like, "Oh man!" I'm like, "I'm gonna crush this." That's and awesome! It was such a joy. And yes, he he out of everything we did was the most pressure and, and the most sort of um, looked at and focused. But quite honestly, I have to say, like. When I was doing previs and pitching the stuff I was doing, it was great. It was very collaborative. Uh, everybody was loving what they what we were doing. I, I didn't really get crazy big changes on that sequence. It was, if anything, it was more like shorten it. Some mm-hmm. of the stuff we did was, had some extra beats and was longer. And they're like, "Hey, let's shorten it." Because when it, when they first pitched, or not pitched, when they first presented some of the storyboards. Uh, Aaron Contreras, the, the uh, lead writer, was like, look, we don't have to stick to any of this. He's like, I think we need some more meat in here. We need we need Seer and Vader to have, you know, a little bit more of a, a standoff mm-hmm. and, and feel something more here with their power, especially her. You know, she's 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 got that dark side she's tapped into that she's afraid of and, and some of that needs to show up. And so let's. You know, let's play with that. And I was like, "Oh, great!" And so, um, I don't know if you've if you've seen any of any of the uh, the end sequence of that. Oh yeah, I beat uh, I beat the game. Oh great! Yep, yep. Uh, so I had to before I talked to you. It's, it's like homework, you know. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to. Uh, I have to show you the previous because you'll you'll. Oh you'll hell get yeah! Out of it, you know, you'll see TJ is is you know he's that's he's in the, we actually put him. In a Vader costume for the previs because it just yes it just helps so much and I got to tell you when he's in the helmet and TJ's doing the voice he actually sounds pretty close oh it's so good it was it was so awesome that when I when I brought him onto the project for multiple characters because he also did you know body work body work for Ninth Sister and, oh, and also what? for Jaro. Yeah, and um, you know because you know there's there's actors playing them as the voice. Yeah, some of the body work, but when it really gets into the action and stuff, it's it's TJ. And, right. You know, he's more aerodynamic. Every... Well, it's just that you know the thing that's that again going back to like TJ's unique abilities is is he's a six four six five guy that guys when they're that height. And and also, you know, and TJ's a thick guy. He's he's built. He's, he's not a big a, dude. He's not a wiry six five. Right. Big guy. And guys of that size, if they haven't been training their body in a in a 
let's say, a martial way, mm-hmm. they tend to be very stiff. Just like any athlete who's only a bodybuilder would be. Right, any right. Diet, right, you know, but when they're taller just because of <laughs> gravity and certain things, yeah. they, just, <laughs> they move slower and, and, and is good in that, but their fluidity and stiffness kind of is, is like there's a lack of fluidity and there can be more stiffness or just a little bit of awkwardness. Sure. Uh, because you're a tree. Really trained. Yeah. And you know, TJ, as, as he told you, you know, he, has a, he, he was a dancer, you know, mm-hmm. and became martial artist. So when you see a guy that size move the way he does, you know, I've, I've had him just play so many characters, and he could play up his size and make himself heavier yeah. or he, lighter, and, and it still looks powerful because he's, he's – moving fluidly as this size guy. So, you know, he was able to, to play multiple characters. And, and the ninth sister was tricky because, you know, she ended up being like, we found out kind of in midway through, like, oh, she's nine feet tall. We're like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a giant? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, so it, it, that's obviously going to affect things and change performance, you know. Right. But, uh, but you know, when I pitched him for Vader... He's like, oh, hey, bro. By the way, you know, uh, I'm playing him in, uh, in the, you know, the other stuff. Yeah. He's like, I've and done I'm this like, before. Oh, <laughs> good. Then it'll be an easier pitch for Lucasfilm because they're like, well, duh. He's already playing this, so he understands what this character needs to be. Right. So, that was fantastic because him and I together were very, very specific about Vader down to his hand gestures. We dialed it all in. We were, we like, everything was choreographed. We made sure we were nailing Vader the best we possibly could be for every scene that he played him in. And, and it was beyond just action design. It was, it was when he drops behind the second sister before he kills her and how slowly he gets up. You know, we, we work on that. And yeah. Head move, lack of head movements, you know, when the hand, everything, like, we meticulously went over and were like, yeah, that how Vader would move, you know. Right. Talk about deliberate movement and like everything yeah, like, means something. It just made it more more joy and easier that it was that it was TJ. You know? Right. He because he knows he's done it before. He's 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 the mocap For Vader. Sure. He's the mocap Vader. By the way, I have a funny story. Please. About him, probably did not tell. I need so. to know it. Here we go. This yeah, is our secret. Definitely. Just me and you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you and everybody who's listening right yeah, now. Yeah. This... They don't count. This is just us. It's just us. <laughs> I don't think they'll mind me telling this because I told this in, 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 in a few groups. So when, when I ever, so when I first hired TJ, actually the funny thing was, is like I'd known TJ. We we known each other in passing. We had became friends through Ruben Langdon, who TJ and Ruben were friends for a long time. Mm-hmm. And we'd we'd see each other around, and um, TJ was one of those guys that. Um, he never. Sometimes actors and stunt people, you know, they hustle. I mean, everybody hustles. It's it, it's part of the game. Yep. You know, and oh, hey man, you got anything coming up? You know, think of me and all that. And that's great. Some people get too extreme. Like I'll see them, like, dude, how come you haven't hired me? And it's like, right. um, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> how, about, how about hello? Good to see you. Right. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> Treat me like a person. You know? <laughs> yeah. Come on, I'm not talking to you like what? The fuck. You know. Right. Never, ever like that. We had been friends for years before I ever hired him, and it was always like just chill. And I really loved that. And Damien Poitier, who is another uh, big action actor, mm-hmm. who was a stuntman that became more full tilt actor, who also moves really well for a large guy. Damien's even taller. Oh man! Well, honestly, there was a there was a project where I had T.J. Damien. Uh, Salah Baker and oh, amazing. Esteban Esteban Quezes who is these are all like big stunt dudes yeah on um, uh, Halo Wars 2 uh, what was it it was the it was the DLC it was a DLC where they're playing um, uh, they're playing <laughs> They're playing the uh, I'm blanking right now the uh, uh, the ape like race. Oh right right right, I know what you're talking about. Uh, 
uh, and they, it was awesome having all those guys. They were they were awakening the nightmare, and they're playing uh, the you know basically the guys that are fighting the flood that they unleashed. Yeah. So have, having uh, uh, you know these the the, the banished these guys Pavium and Voridus, uh, you know, are the are the like two leaders of the crew, and um, you know they did what they were supposed to do, and they they unleashed these guys. So you know, having all these all these big dudes was was hysterical. It was fun. Sure, sure. But, um, uh, Damien. So Damien, when Deadpool came around, and I wanted Damien to play Colossus. Oh, sweet. And uh, uh, he wasn't available. He was in New York. And he said, uh, bro, just why don't you grab TJ? I'm like, okay. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> he's just fucking Colossus, bro. He's like, I, he's like, dude, I, what can I tell you? I'm in New York. I just I can't do it. But, you know, he, TJ's great and he'll crush it. And I'm like, okay. Um, let's do it. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hit him up. So TJ was available, but Tim Miller goes, uh, okay. He's like, so Damien can't do it, but, but TJ, he's like, so you work for TJ? He's good. I'm like, I said, well, Tim, I'll be very honest with you. I haven't worked for TJ. I cannot <laughs> talk from that way. I know he's good from all my friends that have worked with him and he's been in the business a long time. I said, but I, you know, I, I, I can't vouch from that way. He's like, well, just get a reel from him. Nice. <laughs> when Dude, he sends me a fucking reel that was like the eighties. <laughs> it had his time on like Hercules. Oh, oh yes, exactly, <laughs> dude. He's got his fucking shirt open. He's got like I love it, like almost like crazy mullet hair, yeah. like a mustache. He's it's got, got his goatee. Like, <laughs> he's got yeah, he's got stuff from like <laughs> Billy Blanks is is you know uh, workout right, stuff. and I'm going. Is this a fucking joke? What the fuck is that? <laughs> You're like Colossus, right? <laughs> Holy shit! I'm like TJ. What the? What is this, bro? I know you have much more recent shit. I'm like, this is. I, if I show Tim this, he will go, "What the fuck are you doing, dude?" Yeah, <laughs> where'd he's you like, get oh, a VHS? <laughs> uh, well, I just. Yeah, he's like, I'm sorry, man. I just, you know, I. I I haven't needed like a reel, of course, because he's busy. I'm like, dude, just send me a few mocap clips of a few characters that are like bigger characters that just are going to sell you to Tim's Colossus. Just send me a few things. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, okay, okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and he does he stuff. Actually, some of it happened to be, uh, I think it was like some Resident Evil stuff he did with Ruben, a couple characters that I put together in a little edit, showed it to Tim. Tim goes, Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, he'll do great. That'll work. Like, oh. Ooh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and I go, bro, here's the fucking edit I made. Right. <laughs> I <said to> Tim, <laughs> that got you approved. He's like, oh, dude, thank you, man. That's, that's awesome. I'm like, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> right, yeah. Here's your new reel. Don't lose this. <laughs> 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 Throw out the VHS <laughs> one you gave me and take this one. <laughs> yeah. And it was it was uh, it was great, man. He, he was so thankful, and and yeah, he crushed it on. He had, you know, he crushed it on that, and uh, it was it was great, you know. And uh, that's amazing, it, you know. I I love also that like that's something you guys have in common as well as you both grew up massive fans of comic books and superheroes and stuff like that, and then you went on to be massive superheroes. That's super cool. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, it's and that's that's yeah, it's part of the fun, right? It's, it's great when your friends are dialed in and love that stuff too and geek out about it. Because also, again, it's part of that short. Right, right. When you're talking about characters, you know, it's just like you. Like I'm talking about comic book stuff. Like you know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I know that. You know. Yeah, totally, totally, exactly. Except now I have a newfound love for uh, Ray Shaw Ghoul. Well, yeah. I. Uh... I appreciate that in you that you, yeah. you get it. <laughs> yeah, I like that you like what I'm liking about the things that we like. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a t-shirt right there, bro. You know, you know, ha- just put hashtag Brian and that'll work. That could be definitely for your brand and then a t-shirt. Like I'd wear that. Perfect. And, like your podcast. 
Done. Uh-huh. Done. I'll need a picture uh, as proof. Darren Ross endorsed Brian's liking of things. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. So when you're doing like previs stuff, right? How much is there time allotted in the schedule before the shoot? And then you're like, we have to figure this scene out and get everything approved before we shoot? Or like, what's the R&D like as far as the timeline goes? Every, some, you know, so there, I mean, I also do in-game, in-game combat, which I did get the opportunity to do with, for the Star Wars team, which was awesome. Love it. In that days are, they're pretty much improvised, which could actually be super fun because it's like on the day, it's like, okay, so we're doing like, so like Star Wars was amazing because it was kind of like, all right, we're going to start from like this weapon clash, like saber clash. There's a middle point connection beat and then finish with clash. And so we're like, so we can fill in the middle, whatever we want. They're like, yeah. We're like, nice. Awesome. And so those are days where that's where, you know, we're coming up with where I'm like, well, my background in martial arts, if I had a lightsaber, this is what I would do. Right. I'd be putting elbows and knees and headbutts in there. Absolutely. I'd also be grabbing the other guy's arm and redirecting his own lightsaber into himself. So some of that got into the game, which is great, where we where we're kind of not doing it again, not doing it just because that's my background or that's what I bring or because I've got some ideas from some other martial skills or because somebody there on the day, the performer only has a style that, that, that is good for this. Mm-hmm. By the way, most, most of the people that, that are in the, of the unicorns are all mixed martial artists. So they've, they've had a variety. So it's more about like, Hey, because we all have mixed stuff that we've trained in, just like any special forces military person or any mercenary or any, any let's say, warrior war fighter in, in the world mm-hmm. would be a mixed martial artist. They would True. deploy different tactics. Right? That's what so works. They're, yeah, they're going to, by experience, go, well, I'm going to pull a little of this and a little bit of that. Yep. Cal, Cal being a sort of, you know, now a scrapper who's been on the streets, he's not going to have traditional saber stuff. That's true. You know, he's going to be doing different things. So the it was great for not only the in-game cinema. I'm sorry for the yeah for the in-game cinematics, but also for the in-game combat. They let us play with some of that other stuff where where we're doing some some moves, whether some knees and elbows, and then rolling over the back and and grabbing the other guy's saber and stuff like that, or grabbing their weapon. Yeah. And so you know, so that's nice. So not to digress, but that's for that. So that's that's on the day improvised stuff when it's projects where we have time to do some stunt viz, some pre viz. Um, sometimes we can get as much of a, as, as a week to two weeks to work on it and shoot it and edit it and present it and then maybe do another iteration and then do the mocap shoot. Um, Star Wars, sometimes I'd, I would do some pre viz over like a day or two. Mm-hmm. Her shoot, present, and then take that into our what we had was uh, acting days, where it was kind of like we were working with the actors to have them see what the choreography was going to be, so they can be familiar with it, and then we can see the acting overlaps, and then work with them on the choreo and the acting overlaps, which was nice. Yeah. Um, but then you know. TV and film is also very different sometimes. Really? Yeah, like TV TV could be sometimes similar to, to games where it could be a fast schedule spread out. Mm-hmm. Or they might give more time where they've got a lot of time for pre And then film, again, it, it varies too where um, sometimes there's a lot of time months and sometimes not you know every every project's different because of schedule and budget right that makes sense i'm sure you love all of it but do you have like a a slight preference like if a movie a tv show or a game comes up you get like a little extra excited oh for sure it's usually it's usually uh, um i mean i love everything and anything i get to work on uh because it's all fun and enjoyable and, and each project's different and unique because you, you, you've got new characters and new worlds to play in. Right. But for sure, 
you know, I mean, like Star Wars, yeah. as I had said before, back on Star Wars, it's like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm completely, you know, I'm getting chills because I'm like, this is the thing that set me on the path, you know. Right. And, you know, Batman, of course, you know, same thing, you know, it's like, gets me super excited. And, um, but, you know, working on Apex Legends and, and uh, new stuff, there's, there's a Samurai game I, I did a commercial for in December that going to come out and I'm excited about and I did a little fun sports thing with digital domain that was completely comedic for an apple like a funky apple hockey sports game oh, and sweet it was time I court to count with uh, athletes and it was awesome we had a blast and it was totally different and I'm like this is great we had a trick uh, basketball player named Tyler White he used to play for the Glo- Globetrotters he Sweet. is this like crazy talent he could like put a pen in his mouth and the ball would be spinning on it he can what? he can roll it around his body like crazy and I, I grew up watching the Holland Globetrotters in New yeah. York and I was like dude yeah. what <laughs> crazy and um and we had soccer talent you know and like that was completely different that I was like never expected to do something like that and it was it was awesome Man. so I will say I will say any, you know, so it's for sure the, the, the brands that are the ones that, that set me on the path, you know, mm-hmm. but anything that's comedic, yeah. I really, really get excited about because I love comedy action and I'm, and I'm always going back and referencing uh, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd and Jackie Chan. Yeah. All those guys are legends Jackie is a living legend. There'll never be another Jackie Chan. There's nobody like him. There will never be anybody totally like him. Totally agreed. And, and what they do still to this day, like when, when I was telling you, I was shooting this thing with Seth earlier in the week. It was comedic. Mm-hmm. We were looking at Chaplin footage. Oh, cool. And you just can't not get locked in and want to like watch the whole thing because you're still like, my God, this guy was just so amazing what he would do. The, the, the physical gags were just so great from the simple to the hardest things it just never gets old You're just like god if anything it, it, it it's great to people to be reminded of what this guy was doing so ahead of his time he's just like oh my god it's amazing i was i was giving nods to jackie uh and the little bit chaplain on uh the cade six piece the last stand of a gun gunslinger yeah because there's there's some gags in there that I'm literally, you know, was stuff I watched from Jackie that that I was kind of like giving a, giving a tip of the hat to. Yeah, a little homage. Yeah, I love it. Exactly. I, it's funny. A lot of people, you know, growing up, it's always you're pitting superheroes against each other and like who would win in this, blah blah blah. And I remember uh, people being like, you know, who would win a fight between Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan? I was like, that depends. Is a uh, is it a room full of <laughs> exactly. is, it, is it a room full of furniture? In that case, Jackie Chan. <laughs> He's so that's a, that's good. It's a, a brilliant response. You know, it's it's true. It's true. If, if uh, what Jackie Chan can do with a footstool is just insane. It's like he'll take out the entire crew of bad guys. He's like the MacGyver of martial arts. He uses everything oh he has. It's like give him a shower curtain, a footstool, and a spoon, and he'll beat everybody. It's just how it works. And you will love every moment of it and laugh. Yeah, it's so good because he was like one of those people that would like. Do something really, really cool, and then there'd be a joke at the end. You know, oh. like, it's it's brilliant. I'm I'm the same. Huge fan of action comedy. I just love it. Have you seen um, his movie Miracles? No. Which one is that? Miracles. You could even you could just watch clips online too. Um, not not that you. I mean, you should watch the whole thing. It's great. But uh, Miracles is is his homage to. The like forties, you know, gangster films. Really, and oh my god, man! Like the 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 gags that go on. There's a fight in a rope factory. What? Uh, that is actually 1930s. I'm just seeing 1930s Hong Kong. Um, is this fight in a rope factory that is? Just fucking brilliant and absolutely hysterical. And again, this is what's great about comedy because it's like 
why would there be a fight in a fucking rope factory? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, and it's actually a great comedic story. Yeah. But this fight is like he's going up ladders, the ladder of course there's ladder gags, the rope the ropes are all over the place and they're on big giant spindles and of course those come into play and then he's gotta balance on the ropes and then there's one point where he's like jumping and avoiding and it looks like he's jumping rope and the, the fucking gags are circle and then while this is happening it would cut back to like the mob bosses that are watching <laughs> and, and and the brilliance of, of his editing and comedic timing is like stuff where he'll he'll he knows to kind of cut back to these character moments and not just be all about funny action right like he, he understood all that so like there's these moments where it's not just him but like like he'll be jumping rope trying to avoid and and the rope's going up and down and it'll cut back to the mobsters and their heads are going up and down watching the jump rope like huh, yeah. huh? <laughs> and then back to jackie and back to them and you're just like that's fucking genius it's that's true comedic timing that's the guy Ge- he, genius is the perfect word to describe jackie oh Danny. yeah he really really got it and there's another fight in there that's um I think it's actually earlier in the film where uh, it's kind of like the the mob boss is like headquarters slash restaurant and there's all these gags in there that go off that are just second floor, spiral staircase, just fucking awesome. And and, and I, I'll, I will watch them over and over again and, you know, always go back to them and just be like, man, how did he do that and this and that? And yeah. That's that one, you know, it just, you can never, it never gets old. And it's, it was way ahead of its time. Agreed. And Jack is a living legend. He is. He is. His stunt team is just a bunch of living legends. Oh, oh yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I, I had a guy on a while ago. Uh, his name's Vidan Tran. He was one of the stunt coordinators for Into the Badlands. And he talks about yeah. how he got into the Jackie Chan stunt team and like what it took and what it's like. And it, it was bonkers. Bonkers. Oh, yeah. No, those guys were, I mean, you're talking... You're talking, you know, old school badasses. These guys yeah. were, you know, eating it, taking exactly. hard hits. Yeah. You know. It's like jumping from train car to train car. No ropes, oh, no nothing. <laughs> um, unbelievable. Nuts. There's uh, um, Brad Allen, I think it was the only white guy that came out of Jackie's troop. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Brad Allen is, you know, excellent martial artist who became – choreographer coordinator um and i always look for what he's up to in films to see what he's doing because he he's he's gone on to do really great comedic action yeah dude he uh he did a great job with the first kingsman and uh it's not only the choreography but it's the way he shoots stuff so i try to always see how he's filming it but also i like to see if there's like sometimes Sometimes the pre visits get out there some way, or I'll have a friend that like, oh yeah, check this out, you know, and they'll have worked on it, they'll show me some pre visits from it, and I'm like, oh, I can see all the shots. Yeah, the shot back of the pre visits, like that's cool, you know. Yeah. So, given your experience, like if somebody wanted to get into like stunt coordination and stuff like that, what advice would you have, or things to look out for? What do you think makes a good stunt coordinator? Well, everybody comes from. Well, probably just like any any art art form, right? If you ask ten writers or ten actors or ten stunt people, how'd you get into it? You'd probably get ten different answers. Oh yeah. So I think I think um, in life, uh, it's what is it that is your sort of unique abilities that you maybe have honed um, to become whoever you are in whatever part of your life. So most Stunt coordinators, to my knowledge, have come from stunt backgrounds. They were they were a martial artist doing it. They were a badass stunt driver, or, or you know, stunt riggers come from different backgrounds. They're usually uh, part of a team of rigging people that that you know learn that. They come up that way, and they become really good with gags and fire, like Action Factory, who's, who's yeah uh, an awesome team who I love and. Um, owned by Jason Domenico and they, they've, I've been working with them for you know over 10 years. They've got my back and I bring them on all my projects and, and there's not a gag I can come up with that they can figure out. And, and um, 
they've enjoyed learning about motion capture and, and having you know, been bringing them up through the world of motion capture. Um, but you know, they're you know, Jason's old school. He's been doing it a long time, and their their specialty besides their rigging is fire. Um, and Jason Ooh. came from a Cirque background, so some people come from Cirque, you know, acrobatic martial arts practical gags, you know, uh, driving fire, whatever it is. So, um, it's, it's that it's what, what do whatever people enjoy, everything, you know, it's the Joseph Campbell quote, right. follow your bliss. Yep. Right. Yep. So if your bliss is martial arts and you love the shit out of whatever martial arts you do, well, that's going to be your specialty. You know, and, and if it's multiple mixed styles or if it's a specific style, if you're just wushu, not just, and I, I don't mean that wushu is an amazing form unto itself, but if, yeah. if, if swords are your specialty or swords and knives or weapons or, you know, or whatever it is, usually that's the thing because that's going to be your, your, your bliss and you're going to enjoy the most. Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to be a great entry point for you to probably begin doing action design and begin a path that could lead to coordinating if that's what somebody wants to do. I funny thing is, Brian, like I never I didn't know I was gonna become a stunt coordinator. Right, right. It just sort of like happened by doing. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know I was gonna be acting and stunt coordinating and and all this stuff and directing and all like special effects of the path and then becoming an animator, three D animator and then getting into martial arts and acting, it just all coalesced. Sure. And I loved it so much from, from my training and having a, a language for it through my teachers that it just became my bliss. Sure. And the more I did it, the more I was like, I was coordinating, I was choreographing, I was hiring people and, and designing action with them. It and just, so like, it just organically grew. It organically grew. And then eventually was like, well, it's time to do this full tilt freelance and, and be fully unleashed. And, you know, Star Wars is the first one out of the gate, which I was like, thank you, universe. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> fully spread the wings, right? So, so, yeah, I guess, you know, my advice would be really if, if some – most of the time people who become coordinators, they kind of, they kind of get – they start to get invited or asked to do that on sure. some level. Sure, you know? Um, and I've, I've done a lot of, a lot of talent I've hired, uh, to play characters. Uh, I'll choreograph with them as a coordinator. Um, and then, but then there's times where, you know, the project is big enough where you're like, Hey, why don't you go off? You two go off, you know, work on about like four or five beats. You know, the ins and outs of this, you know, the story we're telling, you know, the weapons and, and environment. So work on four or five beats, we'll come back and then we'll plug it in and then we'll connect it all up. So that's, that's an area where people start to get the freedom and responsibility to kind of create their own beats mixed in with the big, bigger piece of action that we're designing together. And, you know, if they do that more and get more responsibility. They, they'll, they may start doing their own coordinating and, and, and such, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, kind of shows you what they got. Yeah, sometimes it's fight coordinator, then stunt coordinator, or stunt coordinator, fight coordinator. Those words started developing, you know, as I mean, because we're in a we're in a day and age now where there's, I mean, it's so much fucking action, right? You know, yeah, it's like, for real. It's everything is action, visual effects, which, quite honestly, we all should be. I, I believe we all should be getting more credit for visual effects artists and stunt people should definitely be getting totally more good. credit. You know, visual effects do get the credit, although a lot of visual effects artists myself included, like we kill ourselves, we bust our ass. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was a guy who was killing myself both in the motion capture volume and then killing myself on the box. Right. You know, animating the stuff that we captured and, and putting cameras on it and like the, the mocap was the shortest part. You know, that's a couple of days. Then I got to go and do all this extra animation on top and fix and tweak and, you know, it's never one to one. Yeah. Like there's a whole nother level of choreography and stuff going on there and over the top of it. So, you know, I, I I do appreciate Brad Pitt doing a nice shout out to yes, to amazing some community Oscars. It's awesome, and um, more of that should happen. I totally agree. But, that's why I'm here. Well, yeah. well that's awesome, man. And uh, <laughs> you know, 
great for you to give people a voice because it is important and everybody works so fucking hard man like you for know it's real it, there you know whatever level of stunts people are in they 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 train so much they train so hard and the work we do is not easy people really put their bodies at risk and they do it day in and day out and you get pounded on, you know, there's so many actors that are like, well, I, I do my own stunts, you know, and, you know, so I can do it. It's like, yes, no problem. We're, we're going to train you and teach you as much as we can so you can do as much. But when it's take 10 and your yeah. body's getting slammed in the ground or slammed into the wall or you may eat that punch, that's when you're going to be like, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe the stunt performer, the double, should really do this. Right, you know? right. It, that thing that you know they are they are athletes of a very unique blend because it's it's their bodies you know not only physically trained to perform well it's also you know to eat shit yeah for real be able to get back up and go again and do take 20 you know it's true it's true hopefully hopefully oscars one day they got a break eventually they need they need some sort of industry recognition cuz it's it's nuts what you guys do and I love it. I love it. And it doesn't make sense when, when we understand that, look, it's all made up. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Okay. <laughs> so if we know people wear wigs. Yep. And hair pieces and costumes. And we know there's visual effects that mm-hmm. also put things that aren't there. We know there's stunts and stunt doubles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I know. I know. They're behind the I curve. Don't get it. <laughs> but anyway. It'll happen. I'll be the champion. But- I'll wear a shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I don't. I don't know if I fully answered the question. It's really kind of. It's like art. Whatever people's unique. It's like art. Yeah, it there's, is. There's a hundred different answers. Whatever. Follow your bliss. You know, it's, it's what I always tell people. And 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 if you so desire to be a stunt performer and a choreographer and a coordinator, follow your bliss. You know, stay on the path of it and and work with good people and good people will give you opportunities. I think that's and then, great. As you said before, the luck will appear, right? You know, the opportunity preparedness meet and, and the and the doors open up, the luck opens up. And, it's true. You know. It's true. You got to get out there and do it. I'm into it. Yeah. Can you believe we've been talking for over 2 hours? Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Ha-ha. Take that. That was unexpected. Wow. <laughs> I just looked that up and I was really like, quick. "Whoa." <laughs> Dude, this was really fun. I had the best time ever. I really appreciate you, Brian. It's it's uh, you know uh, sometimes I don't know. Am I, am I am I running too much? Am I talking too much? <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I love it. I did a three-hour show one time. I think it's the longest. It was like just under three, and I was like, well, wow. this is the show. <laughs> but before I forget, I have to ask, uh, where can people find you online so they can reiterate my sentiments that you're great? Oh, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I you know I'm on social media. I. I'm I'm still old school social media. I'm I'm I don't I'm not like one of those like posting all the time kind of guys. Same. Uh, my Instagram is the one that I probably stay the most kind of like active with, and that's just at Darren R. So it. E. Yeah, D E R R O N R at Darren R. Um, I am on Twitter though. I do not use Twitter. Uh, that much, and so much that I have to even look up my own friggin' Twitter handle. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm at Darren on that one. Uh, I am on Facebook. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so you know, uh, my Twitter is is actually at Darren Michael. Oh, there you go. Michael M I C H A E L. That's my middle name. Nice, nice. And I'm on Facebook. Darren Ross, people can find me on Facebook for sure. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. And then keep a lookout for your name and credits because you got some cool stuff coming up. Yes, Bloodshot's coming out. We're very excited about that next month. Mm-hmm. Some really cool action sequences for that. We're excited about. And uh, yeah, we got some Apex Legends coming out. Some commercials. Yeah, I'll keep you looping stuff. Yeah, uh, I love it.
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.